Hi there friends, thanks for joining me again. Today we're going to be making fruit roll-ups. You know, I actually just came home from the farmer's market not long ago and I ended up with this big box of peaches. I was going there looking for a deal and the regular price for peaches was really high. It was like about four pounds of peaches for eight dollars, which works out to be about two dollars per pound and they weren't even certified organic. I was really hoping to get some, you know, peaches that were relatively good, so I asked her about her methods and she said she sprays with neem oil, which is one of the organic methods of taking care of them. They're just not certified, which is good, so that's always good to double check and make sure your fruits and vegetables are safe and healthy. And then the other thing is, <clears throat> I'm always looking for a deal, so of course I asked, you know, you don't ever be afraid to ask. Um, so I asked her what kind of, you know, seconds she had or bruised and she told me she would sell me a whole box of peaches for $25, but when we started going through them, she decided that some of them were pretty beat up, as you can see. Some of them are better than others, and some of them are less good than the others. So she sold me the whole box for $20, which works out to only about 61 cents, you know, 60, 61 cents a pound. Way less than her original price. So here I have this whole big box of peaches I need to get, <laughs> I need to do something with, which is why I'm going to go ahead and make some fruit roll-ups right now because it's a really good way to use some um, really ripe fruit. So if you ever have any ripe fruit or really over, maybe even overripe fruit, which wouldn't be suitable for jelly making and things like that, um, then fruit roll-ups are an excellent way to take care of those. So the first thing you're going to want to do, I'm going to be using my dehydrator, my Nesco Professional Dehydrator. And so the first thing that you do is you take your fruit roll-up trays uh, and spray them with oil. This is a very important step. If you're going to be making them without a dehydrator and you're going to use maybe your oven or something, just follow the directions below for how to prepare your pan, um, just a regular sheet pan with parchment paper and use oil. The oil is very important because if you don't use it, you're going to end up with your fruit roll-up sticking to your pan really bad and a problem later on. So there you go, there's the first step. Okay, so for about every half of a blender full that you add of fruit, you're going to make one fruit roll-up. I have about a whole blender full which is four peaches. So you can actually use any type of fruit you want, any traditional type of fruit. I mean, the scientists are telling us that zucchinis and pumpkins and cucumbers are fruits now, but um, I wouldn't use those. Stuff like peaches and apricots, um, you know, anything like that. Cherries, raspberries, blackberries, blueberries, any type of um, traditional fruit you would like. You can even use bananas. Um, or even pineapple if you would like. Just any kind of traditional fruit you want, with the exception of citrus fruits. I wouldn't try oranges, lemons, limes, things like that. Those are the only ones I would steer away from. But there you go, once you have your blender full of fruit for how many ever it is you're making. The next thing that I add is applesauce. If I am making one fruit roll-up, I would add a half a cup of applesauce, but since I'm making two fruit roll-ups all at once, I'm going to be adding a whole cup. Actually, I have added a whole cup of applesauce. Now, if you are using um, a fruit that's going to um, turn brown after you cut it, you're going to want to add some kind of an acid. So you can either add like lemon juice, lime juice, or anything like that. They also make a powder in the, the grocery stores that uh, can keep fruit from browning. I'm not a fan, but you can use that if you like. Um, if it doesn't turn brown, like a cherry or something like that, I would skip this. And then the next thing is if you want to add any type of sweetener. Um, I'm probably not going to be adding any since peaches are pretty sweet anyway, but if I was making this out of like raspberries or blackberries or something, I would probably add a little bit of sweetener. And so there's one rule of thumb that you're going to want to follow is that you always use a liquid sweetener. If you use anything that's powdered or crystalled of any sort, this is going to cause your um, fruit roll-ups to become hard. And they're, instead of them being nice and soft and chewy, they're going to be brittle. So I would recommend either honey or agave nectar. Those are my first two choices. If you really like, you could add corn syrup, but just any type of liquid sweetener you like. Another option would be to add some apple juice concentrate. Apple juice concentrate is gonna work for two ways. It can actually add a little bit of moisture to this to make it blend easier, which you can also use your food processor if you like, but I don't own one, so I'm just using my blender. And it's also, apples are really sweet, so they're going to sweeten it up as well. So that's what I'm going to be using in this one today. If you really wanted, you could add just a little bit of apple juice, but keep in mind that if you add any type of a thin liquid, whatever you do, don't add water. But if you add, like, um, apple juice, there's a chance that later on when you go to make your fruit roll-ups, they could crack. 
Um, they'll still be perfectly edible and delicious, they just won't look as pretty. So I'm going to go ahead and add just a little bit of this apple juice concentrate and we'll go ahead and blend it up. The reason I don't have in the recipe a specific amount of any type of whatever um, liquid sweetener you're going to add is because there is no definite recipe for it. If you're having a fruit that's um, abnormally tart, you're going to need to add more. And if you have one that's sweeter, you may not need to add any, like I mentioned. So what I would just recommend is after you've put it in the blender and blended it all up, taste it. And if it tastes good, um, then go with it. And if it's a little bit tart and you think it needs a sweet, some sweetener, put a little in and taste it again. And if it's still a little tart, maybe put a little more in and blend again until you get the consistency right. It's just kind of one of those things you have to add until it, it feels right. It just tastes good and you think it'll work out. So, sorry for the vagueness in the recipe there. Okay, so here's our finished product. It looks quite a lot like a smoothie. Kind of thick. So the next thing we're going to do is just pour this onto our prepared pans. I like to pour it around so that I have less to uh, have to flatten it out. And again, this blender is going to make two of them, so I'm only going to add a little bit more here, just until it's half. There we go. And then just flatten it out with your spoon until it's nice and even. These fruit roll-up trays are really nice because they have this lip on the inside and the outside edges that keep this from, you know, going anywhere. Okay, there we are. And now we're just ready to stack these up and then get the, uh, the dehydrator going. Okay, here we go. We have four of them in here. One, two, three, four. All stacked up. And I have it set to 135 degrees. And now we're going to go ahead and let it dehydrate until they're leathery and pliable. And we'll see what they look like. Okay, so we started these yesterday afternoon. Uh, and I let it run the rest of the afternoon and then into the uh, overnight, really. And so this morning I went to check them and they're definitely very done. In fact, this might have been just a little bit more than I would like. Um, when you touch it, it doesn't feel sticky at all. Um, it has a nice smooth feeling to it. There's nowhere where it feels like it's still moist at all. And when you peel up the edge, it comes off easily because we, you know, um, made sure to use the oil on the pan. And it's kind of pliable and, you know, flexible, kind of like leather. Um, this is what you're looking for. You definitely want it to be pliable and flexible, not necessarily crispy or crunchy if you use the liquid sweetener anyway. And so, now the next thing I'm gonna do is just pull this whole thing off of this pan, and then I'm gonna cut it. See how easy that comes off, it's so easy. These pans are really nice. I really like this dehydrator. Anyway, I'm gonna pull this off of the, the pan really fast, and then I'm gonna use my food scissors, and I'm gonna cut it in half, and then half again, and then I cut each of those halves in half again, and so I basically make one of these into eighths, and so, now, let me just do that and we'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so here I have my tasters again for you. This is what they look like. I cut them into these little pie-shaped wedges. You can cut them into any size you want, of course, but this just works best for us, I think. Nice size pieces. So tasters, go ahead and taste it and let us know what you think. <laughs> How is it? Delicious. Delicious. Delicious, huh? Will this make a good snack? Mmm, nice and healthy too. Well, thanks tasters. Thanks for your help.